Hey, welcome to another video. In this video, we will learn about how we can update the card quantity, how we can remove it, custom event and global functions. There is a lot to learn and a lot of techniques as always. So you will learn something really cool in this video. So let's start. In here, we have the card in here. When we increase the quantity, it should update the card and the X button should remove it. So I already done the X button in here. Once you click on this, it is removing and the card is empty now. So let's add the product again. Now it shows the product in here. Okay, great. How do I remove it? So if you come to the um, cart API documentation in Shopify.dev, in Shopify uh, you can do it in using a post request to the change.js. So change.js is for that. Like you can use update also, but the perfect time, the perfect like API for that is change.js. So here is how you do. You will pass the variant ID as well as the quantity. So if you pass the quantity of zero, it will remove it. If you pass quantity of two or three, it will just modify or change that. Now change is used on many different other ways also. So if I scroll down, you can also remove the selling plan or change selling plan in here. Selling plan or for the subscription. Some products are on subscription in Shopify. For example, if you are selling like a protein bar or a shampoo, you can put it on a subscription. People buy it on a monthly basis. So this is the selling plan, not something that I would do in this video. Uh, what we are interested in is, is uh, using line. Line is in which item they are. So if this is my card, this is the line and this is like the first one and the second one, third one. So that is the line number. Now let's see how we can remove this uh, from the card. Let's check this function first and we will add the same thing and this minus and uh, plus also. So if I come to my code, this is for the remove. It has a title, just a button. It is sending a fetch request to the change API with the data that we pass. The body is quantity and line item. And after a successful like uh, response, it is going to run uh, this event uh, called updated. And of course, our drawer is listening for that. Once it uh, sees that this event has been fired, it's going to update our card. Okay, that is what we did in the previous video. So, if this is doing the trick, uh, it should be the same thing for this quantity, right? So we increase and decrease the quantity. So let's extract, extract this into a global function. And instead of writing this, uh, let me just uh, clean up this a little bit. I'm not going to find an event in here, but I will call a function. Let's say remove item from the card or whatever. But in here, our function will accept two parameters. One is the line um, item or the number, and the second one is going to be the quantity. So the quantity is of course zero. When we remove it, we pass the zero. But the line item, it should be a number. Which one is this? First one, second one, third one. Instead of that, we can use for loop that index. It is, since we are inside the for loop, you can see the for ended here you can use the for loop index in here. It will start from one, two, three, and four. Okay, we pass the line in here. Which item is that? The second one, and we are going to remove that. We pass the zero. Where is this function? We can declare this function. There are different ways you can declare this function, but I will put it in a global uh, variable. What is a global variable? A variable that is easily accessible across the page. So we can assign it in the window variable. You see this window? So we can assign that directly to this. And we will do this technique uh, throughout the course. So that's why it is very important to understand. Now, how do we do this? Let's come to the code. We have a file called app.js inside this source directory. The only thing we have added was alpine.js. But I'll come here at the bottom. I'll create uh, an object in here. What do we call it? There should be a unique name to this. The reason I say it should have a unique name is because it should not interrupt with any other app that someone installed in their store. Uh, I can call it Code Inspire on the name of channel and that will work. But since our theme is called Sunrise, we can call it Sunrise, the same name as the theme. So let's call it Sunrise. And this is just an object. Inside this object, we can have functions, as many functions as we want. What do we call it? We call the first function remove item. 
something like this remove item or remove whatever like a proper name would be fine but for this example i will just call it remove item but it is good to have a remove item from the cart it accept two parameter the line or and the quantity and what are we going to put inside this let me paste the code i have copied from my change function so here is the thing we send a post request to this url this is the quantity this time make it dynamic it will come from this qty and the line item instead of writing a liquid code we just write a line in here that's it now this function is accessible for us so if we want to increase the quantity we just put uh, one one more number if we want to decrease it we just put like a minus number that's what we do and then we fire this event now let's come here back to the cart form and instead of this we have to write sunrise dot remove item and also sunrise is not available unless we assign it to the window variable so we can say window dot sunrise equal to sunrise something that we do i also don't put semicolon in here that is like typescript style i think but yeah feel free to put it it is just up to you for now i didn't put it javascript is smart nowadays let's come here let's refresh this and let's see if we can access that um, global function that we set so if i write here sunrise i can see remove item is available in here and then accept two parameter line and qty for quantity so i'll come here and instead of this remove item i will say sunrise dot remove item something like this sunrise dot remove item and we pass the quantity as well as the zero number in here now let's refresh the page let's see how it works now it should work as expected like if i remove it it does remove but dispatch is not defined that is an expected behavior if i come to my javascript we are running this dispatch dispatch is only available in alpine but this is pure javascript it does not understand what does dispatch means in here and in this instance we have to fire a custom javascript event so if i write in here fire javascript event and let's see what copilot is doing okay copilot is saying you can say document dot dispatch event with this information but we are not firing it on a document level we are firing it on the window level so if i come here um if i say fire javascript event on window i know how how, how you get it done but i just want copilot to auto complete it this is what we do instead of document write window the reason i put window is because i'm listening to a window uh in my cart drawer if you notice here uh, this is a uh, cart updated dot the window so if i have a document in here um you will write a document in here so this is the event cart updated how easy it is to write a custom event okay let's come here uh, let's refresh our page this time it should work right since we don't have any item let's add one yes we have it now let's remove it it did remove and it fired the event and the card is empty now that's great we have successfully created this global function and we can use it anywhere on our page now here is what we do we come here and let's apply it to the quantities also this is a bit tricky right so we have to have the existing quantity okay let's put in the plus one first uh, I normally put the class in the last because class are a bit long. Let's try a click in here. And again, we are going to use sunrise dot remove item. Uh, we shouldn't call it remove item. We should call it update quantity or QTY, right? This is much, much like better. Why I call it remove? Because we are not removing. In this instance, we are updating. And here also we are updating. So we just pass the zero value. That's why in here we should call it update quantity. I hope I have I have no mistake, like typo mistakes. In this one that you see in here, uh, first of all, we have to, uh, in the first one, it should be for loop that index okay 
But the second one, huh? This is the tricky part. Should I put one in here? Then it will just change that to one. So if it is one, it will make it one again. This one should be dynamic. So how would you do that one? You can pause the video and see how you could figure out this one. I haven't done it, so let me give it a try. In Alpine, let's create another component in here. And let's call it a data and we pass a quantity in here. This one should store the product quantity for itself. In here, I will say item dot quantity. Okay, that's cool. Now, instead of uh, doing this, let's pass the quantity. So, if you pass the quantity in here, plus plus, it should add one to it, whatever it is. And if you minus it, it should pass the minus. Now let's give it a try if it works. This is what we do. Okay, cool. Now let's refresh it. I haven't done it, so I want to do it together. So if you see any error, you can see that I am not a perfect like developer too. If I click on this, it didn't do anything, right? Okay, yes, it is. It did update plus, but it took some time. If I refresh this, let's come back here. Let's give it another try. Add to cart. I will wait a few seconds. If it did get that. Now here is also a tricky thing that we have to remember. Okay, this is the button. We click on this. Uh, it didn't work. And it didn't also throw an error for us. So if I remove it, the remove is still work, but if I add it, increase the quantity, it doesn't work. So let's come back here. Do you think we can have like um, this plus plus directly in here? If you can't do that, the other example would be to put plus plus in here before you pass it plus one to it. Okay, let's come here. Let's refresh it. Click. Let's refresh again. So make sure you get every update. Now let's click on this. Yes, it works this time. This is increasing. Now you see everything gets updated without noticing. Now th there is one more thing that we can add, but I will do that probably behind the scene. A loading like state in here. So when someone click on this, it should go in loading state. Like I shouldn't let the user just like throttle like the card. You see 11 in here they should be able to do one by one. In Alpine.js, if you come to on click, something I have to show you, you can do debounce. Debounce will let you click only once. So you say debounce, that time it is not going to let you click multiple time. You can just run this debounce and it's not going to let you send that request again until the other one is complete. So I'll remove it. Let's see what is the difference between them. And if I come here, okay, we don't have an item. Let's add one. Let's click. It add more. Now, if I multiple click on this, it doesn't work. It just add one in here until the request is done. So that's a good job for the debounce. Now, see if I'm clicking on this, it is going to accept only one click. That is good because we are not going to heat up the Shopify uh, card memory. That is something that you have to remember. Now, the same thing it will go to this one. Okay, at click the debounce is equal to, okay, sunrise dot update quantity. Okay, let me just copy the whole thing in here. Sometimes, the purpose of copying is not because we are lazy, because we don't want to make a typo and come back here. So in this one, let's minus minus and add it. This is how it works. How easy and clean it is. I think it is much cleaner than writing the whole Alpine JS in here. Some people prefer this and also we will refactor the add to card in the future videos. If you don't like this way, Alpine has a better way of handling like JavaScript component in a completely extra file. We will do that. Like a lot of people don't want to write 
JavaScript and say HTML, which they are right. Uh, okay, now everything is working fine. Plus, minus, minus, and minus. It works, it looks a bit slow unless you add a loading set in here. So I challenge you to add the loading set. Otherwise, check out the source code on GitHub. I will add the loading in the future video. But that, that is what I will do behind the scene. Now everything is working and you can see everything is in the card is updating properly in here. What is this? This is applying the discount code in here for us. If it is more than $10, that is what we did in the previous videos. But yeah, that is how you can use the global variable and how you can update the card. I hope this video has been informative and you learned something new. I thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.